Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I've got another game for you today between Leela and Stockfish. And again, it's another Alpha Zero simulation match. So again, both sides of 10 minutes with a five second increment. And in this game, it's actually a French. So we'll see how Leela dismantles, or should I say destroys the French from Stockfish. So there is an opening book in this game and Leela's playing white, Stockfish playing black. And the opening moves are as follows. It goes E4, E6, French defense d4, d5, knight c3, knight to f6, white plays e5, which hits a knight, which drops back to d7, white plays f4, black plays c5, after knight to f3, knight c6, bishop e3, there's a trade on d4, takes takes with bishop c5, queen goes to d2, castles king side for black, castles queen side for white, and then a6, and that's the end of the book move, so from here on in, it's the computers or the engines playing the game. So the first move by Leela was to play knight to b3, hitting at this c5 bishop. Stockfish could have traded bishops on e3 here, but instead decided to pin the knight on c3 with bishop b4. Leela put a king to safety with king b1, and Stockfish played queen c7, eyeing up the c3 knight on the c-file. Bishop d3 from Leela, knight to e7, so opens up the queen, Again, the bishop and the queen hit this knight, and Leela just retreats the queen back to f2, with Stockfish now taking on c3, and the pawn recaptures. Um, if black takes on c3 here, queen takes c3, uh, white maybe has a good position, because bishop d2 can be played. So black's going to pawn, but after queen c7, bishop b4, white's actually got a very nice position, forcing black to maybe play rook to e8, and there are a few nice tactics here with bishop takes e7, rook takes, and white could opt for bishop takes h7, wins the pawn back. Uh, the point being is if king takes, white's got queen h4 with check, and we'll pick up the rook. So white's just the exchange up in this variation. So for this reason, after the pawn takes c3, Stockfish played rook to e8 to avoid the complications, and Leela played h4 getting on with a king's side attack against black's king. So Stockfish does the opposite and plays a5, attacks on the other side of the board, which is a lot of uh, logical sense. Knight d4 by Leela though. The point is now though, after this a pawn has been moved by Stockfish, uh, the b5 square is now incredibly weak, so this allows the knight to jump in. b6 was played, knight to b5 hits the queen, Queen c6, and now the knight can jump into this nice square. Knight to d6, which hits the rook, which goes back to f8. And now Leela's in a commanding position. She plays bishop b5. The bishop's protected by the knight, and the queen is now attacked. Um, but so, basically now Stockfish just does take a free pawn. Queen takes c3, uh, but at the expense of a better position for white. So, black's a pawn up. But white definitely has a better position, has the two bishops, which are considered stronger than the two knights. Bishop d4 hits the queen. The queen drops back. And now h5, so Leela gets on with her attack. Knight to f5 was played by Stockfish. So hitting the d4 bishop, the d6 knight. But uh, Leela's got a few tricks of her sleeve here. She plays h6, undermining the king side. And friends play moves like queen to g3 and start harassing this g7 pawn. g6 is played in the game. Leela captures on f5, and now Stockfish does have to be a bit careful. For instance, if g takes here, uh, queen g3, king h8, and queen g7 will be checkmate. So e takes f5 is mandatory, and queen h4 is played. So what's Leela's idea here? She wants to take the knight on d7, which protects this square on f6, Basically, white wants to jump their queen into f6 and deliver mates on this g7 square with the pawn in a very good position. To avoid this, Stockfish plays f6. So it stops the queen jumping into f6, but it also weakens their position somewhat. Rook to e1 was played by Leela. Knight c5 is now played. e takes f6, and basically white just wins back the pawn with probably a really nice position. I mean, look at black's king. It's incredibly weak. And White's idea here is to play maybe rook to e7, play rook to g7. I've got a very nice um, position against Black's king. So, but knight to e4 was played by Stockfish, blocking up the e-file. Bishop b5 though, hits the queen again. 
Queen jumps in to f7, and Leland reroutes their queen now, queen h3, rook d8 is played. Um, after queen h3, actually, it was possible for black to maybe play knight to f2, forking the queen and the rook. However, having gone through a variation, uh, white gets a very nice position. The rook doesn't matter too much, actually, here, because after queen f3, knight takes d1. White should play bishop to d4. Point being is it uh, opens up the e-file and rook to e7 is coming. So after bishop e6 to block, there's queen takes d1, wins back a piece at least. Uh, and actually black's in a lot of trouble. The black pawns do a great job of um, sort of stunting black's uh, development and attack here. This bishop on e6 is blocked in by its own pawns for instance, and the rooks and queen aren't doing that much. If play continues, then I think after queen d3, rook d6 and a4, white's got a very nice position. And if there are a few more moves like queen c7, rook e2. Basically, white can play moves like bishop to e5 and at least win the exchange back. Uh, but arguably, white's actually got a better position here. Even though black's rooks, even though rooks are worth maybe five points, bishops worth three. In this position with everything blocked, the bishops actually do quite a good job. But going back to the game, so after queen h3, Instead of playing knight to f2, rook d8 was played by stockfish. Queen b3 was played, knight c5 hits the queen. The queen retreats back, um, and after bishop d7, the king for Lila just goes to safety in the corner, king to a1, and now it's pretty safe there. Rook e8 is played, bishop to e2, rook to c8, and actually this stockfish allows queen takes b6. I'm not sure about this. I think maybe Stockfish wanted to open up some lines against White's king, um, but they've just lost another pawn. Stockfish played knight to e4. The knight is very strong though, in the centre. Bishop d3, and now there's bishop to a4, which eyes up the c2 pawn. So this was very Black's idea, opening up lines, sacrificing pawns to get some sniff of a pawn on c2 here. Lila defends it, the bishop retreats back, Lila gains the open file, rook b1, there's knight d2 attacking the rook, which jumps in to b2, and then there's knight to c4, again attacking the rook, but this allows now Lila to just take, there's bishop takes c4, rook takes c4, and rook to d1. a4 is played, queen d6, attacking the d5 pawn with the queen and the rook, so bishop c6 protects the pawns, uh, after rook b6 though, attacking the bishop again on c6, retreats backwards and then this c3. And now we just see, have a look at this great bishop on e5. I mean it's blocked in by its own pawns, but it's pretty much doing everything. It's protecting the pawn on c3, protecting f4, and guards f6. And it's going to be very difficult now for black to make any progress. So rook c8 is played, there's rook a6. Rook to d8 attacks the queen, and Lila just plays queen b6. There's bishop b7, and then just rook takes a4. And basically now white's just a whole pawn up. Rook d7 is played, queen d4, bishop c6, and then rook comes to a5 to move away from the bishop. Black tries to grab the open file, um, but actually now white's position is probably superior. Lila just plays g3. And now all of her pawns are on dark squares, at least the ones that matter anyway. Um, and basically, you imagine that if a white could trade a pair of rooks, white's got quite good space advantage here. And the bishop on c6 for black looks very bad. So queen d7 is played in the game, and this allows c4. The point being now, after stockfish takes, there's a trade of queens. The bishop takes, and after rook b1 there's a trade. And now it looks like it's dead equal. Both sides have got four pawns each with opposite colored bishops. But actually, uh, this is quite deceptive. White's actually much better here because the king can just go walkies, come up here and take this pawn on c4 and basically drive this pawn up to the a8 square. So rook a7, also the tactics here are in white's favor. So rook to a7 attacks the bishop, king e6 defends, and white's just gonna launch his pawn, it's really fast. There's rook f8, rook a6 check, king f7, and just a5 again. Again, launching this pawn up. Black tries g5, but after rook a7 again, attacks the bishop, the king defends, and now a6. The pawn is two squares away from queening. c3 from stockfish, 
and pawn takes g5. So Lila is being very tricky. Point being, if king takes the bishop, rook takes d7, and the pawn is going to advance up the board, unstoppable. So after f takes g5, rook f7 is played to protect the d7 bishop. But Lila plays rook c7. And again here, if king takes bishop, actually white just wins with a7. And after c2, the clever move here is for white to play king c1. And there's no way to stop this a8 pawn from queening without losing material. Okay, so rook f8 is possible to stop the pawn from queening, but then the bishop hangs. And if bishop c6, white will just play rook takes rook. So that's a terrible position for black to be in. You have to say in this position, it's probably already lost for black. But play continued on with rook to f8, bishop to f4. Rook to b8 check, the king goes to c2. There's rook c8, a7, and bishop to a4 check, with white now picking up the pawn on c3. And this is pretty much game over, because after rook d8, f7, a few more moves like g6, pawn takes, and h7. You see these three pawns here on the seventh rank, all ready to queen. All white needs to do now is to get the bishop into a dark square, like this way. So play continued with g5. There's bishop takes, rook h8, bishop h6, and now basically f8 is coming really fast. So after king d6, there's f8 getting a rook. The king takes on c7, Lila takes on h8, and this is pretty much game now. Bishop c6, rook to b8, f4, white gets a queen, there's bishop to b7. Lila finishes job here with queen d8 check, king c6, rook takes the bishop f3, and after rook b6, the king went to c5, and Leela mated with bishop to e3, checkmate. So a rather interesting uh, simulation match here. Again, it was 10 minutes with 5 seconds, so it's quite a quick game, which makes a lot of sense, because it looks so Stockfish made a few errors here. But i saying that was a great visualisation of how to defeat the French defence. So basically, Leela dominated the position with the two bishops, which happens a lot in the French because black always has a disadvantage there with this e6 pawn at the start, blocking in this bishop on c8. So how did this occur? Well, Stockfish took on c3, thinking he's going to destroy white's position because he doubled the pawns. However, that bishop proved vital in this game. So yeah, it was quite enjoyable. Hope you enjoyed my analysis of this game. If you did, please do drop a like, comment or subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.